All right, let's go out to Denver, Colorado, and talk to Daniel. Hey, Daniel, what up? Hey, Dr. Deloney. Uh, What's up, nice man? Nice to meet you. <laughs> and also with you. Over the phone. <laughs> um, so my, I don't know if I really have a, a narrowed down question for this, but I guess I just need advice in the following situation. So I had, I, I have a pretty close friend group, right? Um, and about a year, year ago, um, one of the girls in this friend group told me that she had feelings for me and we're all about, you know, 24, 25. So it's kind of, you know, serious things. Right. And then I, I, I kind of had said, I, I kind of felt similar, but I, I didn't feel ready to really go forward with anything legitimate just cause I, I was afraid. <laughs> Um, and fl- you know, kind of a bunch of things happen. Flash forward throughout that year, year and a half. Um, I know she had told some of the other girls in our friend group that she kind of was done dating and she knows that like, I'm the one like that, it, that is it done deal. Um, she was kind of just waiting for me. She was done looking. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of just didn't do anything about it. and. It's my understanding that it had been like that up until recently, more or less. And then on New Year's Eve, all of our friends, we had a party, whatever. And then I came back with my roommates back to our house. And one of my roommates, who is one of my best friends, kind of also, we all have the same friends. And he said, me and this girl have been dating for the last month. (laughs) And, you know, obviously my heart kind of sank. Why? Hold on. Why? Why why aren't you happy for your buddy that he's dating an amazing girl that you didn't want to even date? It's yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just was flat out afraid. And then in the last, maybe in all of December, I was like, you know what? I'm being dumb. This person has everything that matters, like everything. This, it was the person. And so I was, I totally made up my mind. I was going to just not be dumb. And then, um, and then he, he dropped that bomb and I don't get me wrong. I, I was so happy for them because he, he is one of the best people I know. She's one of the best people I know. And so I guess one of my questions is, you know, something we talk about a lot is kind of morning dreams and morning relationships with people that might be alive. And I guess, um, you know, how can I do that with, <laughs> with, um, someone that I have to see all the time now, man, y- you've put a ton, like a metric ton, like a dump truck full of granite backing up and just dumping granite dust a ton of pressure <laughs> on yourself and on this relationship. You're talking about her as though she's dead or you're talking about her as though they're married. Yeah. And I actually I, I think, think that, I think it's beneath that. There is no one person. You got to get that out of your head. That's not a thing. It's not real. There's no one like, oh, I finally just decided she's the one. That's not a thing. Mm-hmm. You decided I really want to date her. Yeah. And then she was like, oh, I've moved on. And, and uh, it's, it's it just sucks. Yeah. But I mean, when you say like, I don't know how to, what do you mean? You don't know how I don't, I don't understand. Like, is it a bummer? Yeah, of course. But I mean, what, what is she coming around and like kind of looking at you and winking? Does she still have feelings for you and you don't know what to do about it? And you think she's just like kind of biding her time with a guy that's your buddy. That's something that I'm kind of afraid of. Because the way he, uh, I, I hadn't told anybody about, um, you know, that last year or whatever. And then he had said, when he, when he told me, he had said he initiated it. And I think she took time to, you know, whatever, think about it. And then, you know, they decided to, to date. But he had said that they were most anxious about my reaction. And we, we kind of blew past that in the moment. 
but I can't stop thinking about that because I think a part of me is worried that what if, yeah, what if it is exactly what you said? And so, yeah, I'm partially, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 for whatever reason, you're putting so much pressure on a thing that I don't think can bear the weight you're, you're, you're stacking on it. Like, I don't know. I don't know what the secrecy is getting you. I don't know what your initial stumble to her asking you out or telling you like, Hey, I got feelings for you. I don't know what your hesitation is right now. Like your best buddy on the planet who happens to be a roommate when he comes home and he's like, dude, I finally have been dating this girl for a month. And you're like, Oh my gosh, I had the biggest crush on her too, man. Like, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't understand why those conversations are so hard for you, but it sounds like beneath this thing, I keep coming up with this question. What are you afraid of? Cause you're afraid to date her. You are, <laughs> let me say this. You are afraid of her looking at you and saying, I've chosen you and your body went, no, nope, I'm out. Even though you liked her. And then, <laughs> then your roommate is like, Hey man, I have this other. And instead of, being like, ah, oh, me too. She's amazing, and I hate you, but good for you, man. Your body went, ah, right? What are you afraid of? Uh, what are you I've afraid, what, what, what are you afraid of? To da- know that you would have seen right through me. <laughs> well, I mean, what are you afraid of dating her? What are you afraid of not dating her? What are you afraid of? Even when you decided, all right, she's the one. I'm going to. I took you another 30 days. Yeah. Haven't you yeah. ever listened to any Eminem song? You only get one shot. <laughs> yeah. What are you afraid of, man? Oh, man. That is... <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, w- I was afraid of a lot of things, to be honest. But, um... Like, uh, honestly, if I... If you... If we had had this phone call a year or two ago, it, it would have been... I, I would have been a totally different person. And, you know, not to totally just... <laughs> Um, kiss your feet, but seriously, I feel that your show, listening to it for the last however long, like really has helped helped me a lot and changed who I am a lot. And that that's well, hasn't worked enough because I would have told you just to tell her <laughs> I really like you, and I'm yeah, scared I, I, to death I, I about know, where yeah. this is going to go. Or I would have told so, my buddy, yeah. like, dude, ah, I was about to ask her out, so good on you. And the moment y'all break up, I'm all in. Right? I mean, like, I like. <laughs> All right, can I tell you the other side of this? I'm kind of holding back on you. Okay, go for it. I can take it. <laughs> you can't. For, well, I'm going to oh, tell man. you, but first, because um, I'm just going to make everything more complicated. First thing, you got to tell me what you're scared of. Stop mm-hmm. being evasive. Just go, what are you scared of, man? Mm-hmm. What is it? That you date oh, her oh. and ultimately y'all break up? That your buddy, your best friend is like, get out of my house. I hate you. I'm marrying her. Like, if that's who that dude is, you're going to end up blowing up anyway. You might as well do it now. Like, what are you scared of? Yeah, and he he's not like that at all. Of course he's and not. He wouldn't that, be your best friend if he was. I, I You're know, the one. I, you are the one with the problem. What is it? I know. I know, yeah. I mean, to be honest, when when she had first said that a year ago, I I couldn't help but almost look down on her. Like, I, in a weird way... Yeah, like I, I almost, I, I kind of was thinking, how? Why would you like me? You're crazy. You <laughs> know. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense, but dude, you will not answer my question. I don't care I, about the last year and how you're I different because you listen to my show. I don't care what she, what what you felt <laughs> when she first said that. What are you scared of? Uh, not, not being good enough. I think. Okay, there you go. Not being good enough. And you have somebody that you care about that you really like, that you trust. That's a part of your gang that looks at you and says, I see it. Mm -hmm. And your impulse is to call her a liar with your actions. Nah, it's stupid. And then your buddy who has chosen you to do his 20s with. Mm -hmm. Chosen you. You're like, nah, that's not real either. Yeah, And until you put your head up high and say, I'm worth loving, I'm worth being friends with, 
I'm worth telling the truth. You're going to continue to, 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 to be caught in this loop. Mm -hmm. Because people are going to try to reach out and get close to you because you're probably a really good guy. But you're a really good guy at arm's length. And until you decide, I'm going to let somebody past arm's length, and that means they can truly hug me, but that also means they can stab me. Until you decide to, to, to tread there, you're going to be in this loop, brother. Yeah. So do you think that a conversation with either one of them is warranted? <laughs> All right, so here's part two. Um, <laughs> I had this conversation. And I've been married to her for 21 years. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. And here's the other deal. The buddy on the other end of this um, wasn't my roommate. We weren't super close, but he's a guy that I had high respect for, even back in college. How we met is a hilarious story. Um, we met in a punk club. We saw a guy uh, in the middle of the club just do like – basically assault a woman. He pulled her down and, and smashed her to the floor. She was crowd surfing. And from one side, I was on one side of the punk club floor and he was on the other. And both of us saw it happen from the opposite ends. And both of us crashed into this dude. Both of us took the guy out at the same time. And as we all piled into the floor, I was like, Hey, you, are you, you go to my college? And he's like, yeah, Hey man, that's how we met. <laughs> and then a few uh, years later or a year and a half later, I went back and I, the woman who's my wife now had said, hey, I'm all in if you are. And I said, I'm not. And she moved on. She's like, cool, I'm, all, I'm moving on. And she was dating a great guy, a guy that is awesome. Good guy of character, man. And eventually I came back and said I was wrong. And he was a good enough person. He's like, I know, that's fair. And he could have thrown a temper tantrum and like, well, I'm going to meet you in the parking lot, bro. But no, dude, he's, got, he's a confident, kind, honest guy. Mm -hmm. could, could it have gone sideways? Yeah, of course. But I'm looking at a quarter century with the same woman, and thank God I took that risk. Yeah, and I've thought that too, but I, I think I'm just, yeah, I mean, I'm afraid of it, it going south, and now I'm living with this person who we, you know, had a falling out with or something. And I, I know it's not the best to look at the worst case scenario, but I mean, that. I, I, every I, listen the the couples who figure this out the friends who figure this out the quickest win life what i'm about to tell you every relationship is a risk every one every friendship mm -hmm. is a risk every dating relationship is a risk it's a risk when she says i do and you say i do it's a risk 15 years in when you have two kids and y'all, your bodies both don't look the same and you look over and say, do you still love me? And she says, I do. And then 45 years later, when your kids are, have, you have grandkids and both of you look uh, like, a, like a hollowed out version of yourselves that you married in, when you're in your 20s. You wake up and one of you is sick and one of you has a knee replacement and you look at each other and go, do you still love me? It will always be a risk. Mm -hmm. What I got really comfortable with early on was risking that relationship. And have I gotten hurt? Dude, real bad. But has it been the every blessing in my life? Yep. Everyone. Everyone. Was taking that relational risk. Now, you can be an idiot about this. <laughs> or you can say, hey, dude. Uh, roommate, we need to go out. And had I been roommates with this other guy, I would have had that conversation that way first. But since I, I mean, we wouldn't, we didn't run in the same circles. We didn't hang out. Uh, he's just a guy at my university, like uh, just a good guy. Like um, I didn't go to him first. I went to her, the woman who's now my wife. But in your case, that's your roommate, dude. So you go to him first and you say, "Hey, I need to be honest with you." Like this was gearing up and I was right about to ask her out after a year of toying around with it. And don't say, she told me I'm the one forever. Don't do any of that crap. Because that's, no, yeah. that's just going to like tank what he's got now. But yeah. say, hey, I'm really happy for you. But man, I, was, I got such a crush on her, dude. I just don't want to be weird between us. 
Yeah. And then tell him, whenever you're out of town, I'm probably going to cheat on her with you. Just kidding. Don't say that. <laughs> Don't say that. It's a matter yeah, no. of um, I, 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 here, Here's why I would. Even forget the romantic relationship part. Here's why I would. That's your best friend. Y'all are roommates. And there's a secret between you now. Don't live like that. It's going to mess up breakfast. It's going to mess up lunch. It's going to mess up dinner. And it's one of those things you, you don't want to have that conversation because it might go bad. It might go bad in a big way. And so what you're going to do is you're instead of it being a single grenade explosion, it's just going to be death by paper cut, death by BB gun over and over and over and over until it wipes out. Don't do that, man. And by the way, you're 24, 25. You're going to have hard conversations like this relationally for the rest of your life. And it becomes a skill that you learn how to do well or that you you shy away from. And your kids don't want to hang out with you. Your spouse doesn't want to hang out with you. You have trouble at work. So get good at these hard conversations. Get good at them. You just start by being honest and hey, I'm putting it out there. And maybe your buddy will go, oh, thank God, dude, I don't care. I've been dating her for a week, a month. She's the worst. Or he may say, I'm going to marry her. And you go, cool, I'll be your best man. I'll be right there. She's the one that got away. Good on you. Because what are you going to do? But you, my brother, have to put your head up high and stop walking around wondering why the world likes a guy that you don't even like. You can't give what you don't have. And if you don't love yourself, you can't give that out. You're worth it, man.